Hi, if you currently code in Python, Java, or C Sharp, and you're curious about the other languages, or if you're just considering what language to choose, join me for a quick comparison between these three. Now, the purpose of this presentation is to help developers understand the differences and similarities between these languages, not to promote one over the other as better. I use all of these languages as well as several other languages in production applications. Hey, do me a favor and click on the subscribe button and like this video. Check out the description for more information about us and browse our channel. We've got a lot of great content. All right, let's start with Python. It's older than both Java and C Sharp. Python is an interpretive language with several implementations, including a translator to C. These various implementations are for different specializations of Python. The reference implementation, known as CPython, itself is written in C. Python has a large standard library, as well as a plethora of third-party packages. I just love saying plethora. Now, C Sharp and Java are pseudo-interpretive languages. They both compile to an intermediate form that is mapped to native instruction by a runtime, sometimes known as a virtual machine. We won't focus too much on the differences between Java and C Sharp. We did that already. You can check out that video linked above. Both languages have a large standard library along with thousands of third-party components. In terms of philosophy, Python takes a keep it simple approach. It's one of the smallest languages in terms of keywords. Python relies on plugins and libraries for more advanced features, choosing to leave the core language lean and mean. Python culture is also opinionated in the sense that while you may have a lot of ways to do things, there's a right way to do things, and developers should always choose the right way. We'll see more of this when we get to the code examples. Python also prefers explicit over implicit. In other words, whatever's happening, we need to see that in the code and not so much stuff going on behind the scenes. Now, in that sense, Java sort of agrees in that core philosophy. With only a few more keywords, most of the more advanced Java features are implemented as library modules. The early Java architects envisioned code generation tools creating most of the Java code, so the tedious nature of the simple Java language would be hidden. The Java culture also prefers explicit like Python. Now, having said that, Java has become a little bit more robust in recent years under Oracle's supervision. Now, C Sharp takes much more of the C++ philosophy of syntactical sugar. Give the core language lots of features to hide a lot of stuff and make that stuff implicit. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. With well over 100 keywords, including lots of syntactical sugar, C Sharp encourages the simple application of complex tools to solve complex problems. Generally speaking, C Sharp applications will have fewer, denser lines of code than the Python and Java versions. Where, do, where are these languages used? Well, developers all have their favorite languages, and in some cases, the choice is somewhat irrational. Today, all three languages are used to develop web applications. Python is also used in scientific applications, as well as the big data AI machine learning applications. But I think the best fit for Python is for scripting type applications, batch jobs, ad hoc data manipulation, and other tasks that are better suited to scripting languages. Most Java and C Sharp applications are web, desktop, or large distributed applications, and they do these jobs well. C Sharp, or more accurately .NET, also has portable smartphone app development via Xamarin or the newer MAUI platform. We'll also see some activity in gaming and machine learning for the .NET developers as well. 
I know, I know. I left a lot of uses out for all of these languages, and I probably excluded several people's favorites, and I'll hear about it in the comments. Feel free to chime in. The bottom line is that all three are general purpose languages with capabilities in a broad range of application types. As far as supported paradigms, Python is considered a multi-paradigm language like C++, supporting procedural, object-oriented, and functional programming right out of the box. C Sharp and Java do not support procedural programming and are more focused on object-oriented and functional. In fact, they actually discourage procedural style programming within their pure object-oriented paradigm. All three languages have sufficient built-in types and a rich library of complex types. I think the most significant difference between Python and the other two is that Python is dynamically typed. In other words, variables and parameters and function returns are not specifically designated a type in source code. And since there's no compile phase, there's no support for type mismatch errors except at runtime. This means that simple typos in your source code may not be discovered until the code is executed. C Sharp and Java are statically and strongly typed. Variable types must be specified at compile time and cannot switch their skin at runtime. Java and C Sharp go to great lengths to appear to be dynamically typed with runtime binding to implement polymorphism. Statically typed languages are better at catching problems at compile time, which reduces debug time. The first thing that you'll notice is that Python does not use curly braces to delineate code blocks. Instead, Python uses indentation. The curly braces in Java and C Sharp give programmers the option of how they wish to format their code. Python is much more opinionated about code style. Thou shalt use indentation. Let's go look at the code. On the left, C Sharp and potentially Java, and on the right, Python. C Sharp and Java require semicolons to terminate a statement, while in Python, a simple new line ends the statement, forcing you to put one statement per physical line. Also notice on the left, the C Sharp, the variables types are explicitly declared and cannot be reassigned later. While the Python code on the right, the variable types are deduced by the runtime. Variables can be reused, reskinned to different types as well. When it comes to loops, the Java and C Sharp for loop can be coded with or without curly braces if the loop only has one statement. This leads to multiple ways to do things, and you can see all three of them here in this example. The Python for keyword is really for looping through collections, but it can be used for a range of values. There is only one style, however, and that is that the body of the Python loop is indented in the lines following the for keyword, no curly braces. This while loop example exposes some other differences. Of course, curly braces on the left and indentation on the right. Python does not require parentheses around conditions the way that C Sharp and Java does. And another difference is that Python doesn't have an increment operator, plus plus, but it does support plus equal for incrementing. Since Python supports procedural programming, it supports global functions. Using the def keyword to introduce a function, the arguments and return type are deduced by the usage at runtime. Indentation signifies the function body. There is no equivalent in C Sharp and Java since they do not support procedural programming. C Sharp and Java are focused to be pure object-oriented languages, especially Java. Both support a variety of type specifiers, while Python essentially only has class for type specification. All languages support class methods, fields, and initializers. C Sharp has a designated syntax for properties, and Python supports properties via a property class. Java supports properties through naming convention. As you can see with this side-by-side -side comparison of C Sharp and Python, the C Sharp dog class is a bit more compact. The Python class doesn't support attributes or fields directly in the syntax, but instead by simply initializing the fields in the init function. 
There is no concept of public or private in Python. Programmers are expected to respect the internals of a class. The Python reminds me a lot of the C code that is generated from C++ classes in the early days of the C++ Cfront compiler. The Java version of the dog class kind of sits somewhere between C Sharp and Python. It looks a lot like the C Sharp class, but with the method naming convention to designate properties, which lines up more with what we had to do to define properties in Python. As I mentioned, static typing helps to avoid runtime errors and reduces debugging. Here's an example of what I mean. In the example on the left, the lowercase color property would be a compile time error in C Sharp and Java. On the right, however, misspelling an attribute or missing the case of an attribute simply means you dynamically created another attribute for that object. The Python dog has both a lowercase color of yellow and an uppercase color of green. That might cause some head scratching and debugging to solve. On the flip side, Python programmers have the flexibility of being able to just dynamically extend an object by giving it more properties on the fly. When it comes to data manipulation, C Sharp's language integrated query and Java's Streams API provide a rich set of query type filtering and ordering and transformation functionality. Python's standard library and various plugins also provide powerful data manipulation, machine learning analysis capabilities. In both of these samples, we filter the dog collection to big dogs sorted by weight. Now, no question, Python is certainly easier to get started with, and you probably already have it on your computer. One of the challenges, though, to embracing Python is also one of its strengths, the huge set of extensions and development tools that creates a lot of different permutations, a lot of flavors that might be intimidating or overwhelming as an entry-level proposition. On the other hand, especially with C-sharp, developers can jump into C-sharp in Java by downloading one of the popular IDEs and you're ready to go. Not a lot of decision-making until later. Java and C-sharp are more demanding, however, that developers have a deep understanding of object-oriented concepts and patterns in order to be successful. I feel that these languages are a much better choice for any medium to large size project than Python would be. And what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, if you're a programmer and you love your Java, your C++ or C Sharp, that's great. It wouldn't hurt also to get to know some Python. You're going to run into lots of scenarios where Python is used for configuration, building, ad hoc queries, and demonstrations, and a whole bunch of other things. If you're new to programming and ultimately wish to build professional strength applications, you're gonna to need to learn about curly braces and all that goes with that in order to be successful. Now, since Python is pretty much everywhere, I mean everywhere, IT professionals, data analysts, and developers would benefit from adding Python to their skill set. Hey, click on that subscribe button and explore our channel. We have lots of content on programming and design. As a subscriber, you'll be notified when we add more content. I'm Chuck McCullough. Have a great day.